So it's time for an old legendary rig to make a reappearance here on this channel. This is the rig I used in my first ever YouTube video, the video that started this whole channel. And uh, basically it's uh, <laughs> extension tubes, meter bones adapter because the extension tubes are for Canon and then a Mikey MKC-UP adapter uh, which is used to reverse a Canon EF lens, in this case the Canon 40mm. And there are some uh, step up and step down rings in between here. And then a small diffuser I made of a packet of yogurt. And then this, this flexible arm here that is mounted on a plate under the camera. And the Mikey MK320 flash. Anyway, this setup gave me very nice looking photos when I first tried it. But I was a complete beginner in macro photography then. So I didn't really know what I was doing. Now I have five more years of experience. So I thought that today it would be a fun exercise to take this rig out again with my new knowledge about macro photography and macro photography gear and uh, see what I think about it today. So yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> Let's go. So this rig was the first time I shot at more than one time magnification. Back then there were barely any macro lenses that could shoot more than two times. It was, I think Laua had just released their 60mm and uh, Canon of course had their MPE 65 which is a very old lens. But I think I, I thought that those were a bit too expensive so I decided to build this rig. What a beautiful morning. It's a bit misty. Sun is going up over the sky. Not sure if my small sensor camera can quite capture it. So a lot of people think that I was the one who invented this rig, but that is not true. As I said in my first video about this rig, it was invented by another Swedish guy whose name is John Halmen. He has a homepage with Lots of articles about macro photography rigs and sample photos. And I used to read these very, very closely and with great interest back in 2016. And I was so inspired by his absolutely stunning photographs. I still think he is one of the best macro photographers in the world. I wanted to try to build one of his rigs to see if I could get any photos that were anywhere near. Okay, I see a fly who looks like he's maybe sleeping. Um, I guess we'll find out. He was not sleeping. But there's another fly. A nice thing with this rig is that you have full electronics. Uh, this particular Mikey adapter wraps the Canon lens and forwards the electrical contacts to my camera. So I can control the aperture in my camera. And uh, when I'm not shooting it's wide open so it is somewhat easier to focus because you have a clearer picture in the viewfinder. Although the depth of field is of course uh, thinner. And uh, when you then take the photo, the aperture goes to whatever you set it to. Also very nice to have the EXIF data. I love that aspect of this rig. It's funny how often I sit down to shoot an insect and it just uh, flies away. And then when I'm just about to get up, I discover another insect just because I'm sitting there. <laughs> so it's good to sit uh, at the side of bushes and plants and stuff. You uh, often find a lot of stuff that you wouldn't see from above. I see an Italian striped bug, one of my favorite subjects. Let's see if we can capture it.
I think that was probably my favorite photo so far today. Really happy with how it turned out. Simple photo. I just uh, tilted the branch a bit so that he got in the right angle and so that I had a bit of sky in the background. Took the shot front on and turned out good, I think. Okay, I see a super tiny black and yellow ladybug. Let's try to capture that. Ah, didn't get a good shot. And this rig has an extremely short working distance. So you might think that the diffuser is too small and yeah, it probably is, <laughs> but it still goes beyond or at least uh, touches the focus point. Uh, so the working distance is extremely small, like two or three centimeters uh, from the front that I made here out of white tape and stuff and uh, an extreme step down ring. Uh, so I kind of have to get used to this working distance when focusing. You very quickly get like a muscle memory and I'm usually shooting with lenses with like five or six, seven centimeters of working distance. So I have to kind of readjust a bit. Cute little snail. Not sure if this guy is dead or just sleep. Oh no, he was just sleeping. <laughs> now he's waking up. Okay, I won't bother him more. I now notice something I did not notice when I used this lens five years ago and that is that it seems to have some um, internal reflections. Even back then, on Jon Halmen's advice, I tried to counter it by uh, sticking some um, adhesive uh, black velvet on the inside of the extension tube and uh, my MCUP adapter, but still it looks like you get some internal reflections which usually manifests in lower contrast and strange color cast within the frame. For example, if you're shooting something that sits on a yellow flower, uh, the whole photo, including the insect, becomes more yellow. And that is a clear sign that you probably have some internal reflections in your lens and that is never a good thing. As you might know, some of the Chinese lens manufacturers have this problem and they don't realize that they need to have a very black matte inside of the lens to avoid this. One thing that I would definitely change if I built this rig today is this the red arm here, the flexible arm attached to a plate on the underside and the cable and all of that to the flash it's just so unwieldy so heavy and make the whole setup so much more inconvenient uh, i would go for something simpler maybe my hama adapter that i used in the microscope video to just have the flash directly on the top of the camera no extra cables and uh, not so much extra bulk um, good thing with this way of doing it though is that the flash comes very close to the subject and you can get it exactly where you want it but yeah it's it's not even that good it the arm oh ah, yeah you can see for yourself <laughs> this is just frustrating it's so hard to get the arm to just stay so here we have some kind of ladybug larva I wonder if this is the Harley Quinn ladybug or a regular one. Uh, how do you tell the difference? I know that people can tell the difference, but I don't know how.
Is that just an old shell or is there something living in there? By the way, if you want to build this rig yourself, just go check out my first video about it. You can uh, search for like $230 macro rig on YouTube and you will find it. Uh, it's likely though that some of the parts are maybe not made anymore. For example, I would bet that the MKCUP <laughs> reverse adapter maybe is not made anymore. Uh, please tell me in the comments if you know. Actually, I'm not sure anymore that this opening up of the aperture when you're not taking photos is actually good or helpful. Uh, I see now that it is actually harder for me to focus uh, because the focus peaking does not work as it usually does and the depth of field at f2.8 at 2.3 times magnification is nothing basically. So it's actually harder to focus when it opens up the aperture like this. Um, I, I see the point why you would want this in a DSLR and maybe at lower magnifications but in this case it kind of just irritates me a bit. After a few shots I can see now that the diffusion is really not that good. Uh, you get a bit of diffusion but there still are some pretty bright highlights on shiny insects. So that is also something I would definitely change if I remade this rig today. I would have a larger diffuser and put the flash a bit more away from it to get uh, a larger and softer light source. It was interesting to try this rig again five years later. Not sure it is my favorite rig. I would like to modify it quite a bit and maybe I will do that for another video. Uh, but now I have to head home to my kids and get them breakfast and get them to preschool. <laughs> See you soon again in another macro photography video. Bye bye.